Buenos días a todos. El día de hoy tenemos nuestras, eh, nuestra segunda sesión de las décimo octavas jornadas peruanas de fenomenología y hermenéutica, tituladas Antropología y Cultura, en conmemoración de los 100 años de renovación del hombre y la cultura de los artículos de Kaitso de Husserl. El día de hoy eh, vamos a escuchar al profesor Ion Coperu, él es profesor de filosofía moderna, fenomenología y ética aplicada en la Universidad de Babes Boilé de Cluj-Napoca. Sus intereses de investigación se ubican principalmente en la fenomenología, trabaja los temas de intersubjetividad cotidiana, eh, perdón, intersubjetividad, cotidianidad, derecho y adicciones, así como la ética en las profesiones con enfoque en las profesiones de derecho y salud. Estudió filosofía en Cluj-Napoca, Tubinga y París 12. Tuvo etapas de investigación y becas en Lovaina, Bucarest, Wuppertal, Louvain-la-Nef y Memphis en Estados Unidos. Es autor de varios libros y autor o coautor de una serie de artículos y capítulos de libro sobre los temas mencionados anteriormente. Su trabajo más reciente trata de temas, trata temas como las habilidades, el conocimiento, la violencia y los métodos interaccionistas en el estudio de las adicciones. También es vicepresidente de la Sociedad Rumana de Fenomenología y miembro del Comité Ejecutivo de la Sociedad de Europa Central y Oriental para la Fenomenología. Además, es el editor en jefe de Estudia de la VB Filosofía y miembro del Comité Editorial de Estudia Fenomenológica. Los dejo entonces con el profesor Ion Coper. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Mariana. It's so nice to see you again, even if uh, it is uh, online. Um, uh, thank you to to everyone for uh, taking part in this uh, in this event and uh, and um, thank you for invite inviting me. It's a uh, it's nice to 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 talk with you uh, about uh, about this uh, this uh, topics. Um, I should uh, now. Uh, Proceed, and I will uh, share the screen. No, uh, or you, I, I will start start the uh, uh, to read the, the text. You will you will have the, the the English version or the the Spanish version. No, it's all right, Mariana. If I if well, I start now, sí. Eh, el profesor Ion va a leer su conferencia en inglés y en la eh, pantalla ustedes, el público puede escoger en la opción arriba en la pantalla tiene una tirita verde donde dice opciones de vista. El público puede escoger si lo lee, el, escoge el texto en castellano o en inglés. Así que Ion, si vous se tatúa. <laughs> Merci bien. Thank you very much. Uh, so the simple, I'll start with the simple definition of intersubjectivity, which makes, makes reference to, I quote, the interchange of thoughts and feelings, both conscious and unconscious, between two persons or subjects as facilitated by empathy. It's a, it's a definition I found on uh, on on internet when i it was the first the first uh, search uh, so this is the uh, was someone who is interested in knowing about intersubjectivity is finding uh, it's a kind of common knowledge intersubjectivity consists usually in the sharing of cognitive affective volitive states between two or more subjects a variety of forms of sociality grows upon this intersubjective foundation. In all of them, we may rec recognize particular well-defined forms of interaction and structures of co-engagement with specific outcomes, which are then the basis for the emergence of other forms of interaction and other structures of 
co-engagement. For example, we may say that early interaction between child and caregiver uh, is a form of sociality based on imitation, for, while other forms of sociality in which an individual is involved require gestural communication, normative awareness, argumentation, verbalization, etc. The prefix inter in the term intersubjectivity implies a certain relation between several individuals, subjects or minds. Intersubjectivity characterizes, I quote, the relationship between self and the other, but also a view of the type of the processes that in each case underlie that relationship. Intersubjectivity is more about the processes than about the terms in the relationship. Moreover, the approaches of these core intersubjective processes appeared so far as incompatible. There have been many approaches, uh, apparently incompatible. As Stevanovic and Kors Koski rightly point, pointed out, they do not have to be incompatible. Let us consider the horizontal axis generically that we can generically name self, other or others. If we take a rapid glance at the developments of the concept of intersubjectivity in the century that passed from the first uses of the term by Edmund Husserl, it becomes obvious that we need a second vertical axis, which will help us to differentiate into the nature of the process, the processes that are supposed to take place into the self respective, into the other or the others. They could be, roughly speaking, epistemic, affective, deontic, or normative, but also embodied corporeal processes. If we take into account the non self, or objective part of the horizontal axis. We should then speak about epistemic, affective, etc., but also about practical aspects in the sense associated to the verbs doing or acting, uh, tun and respectively wirken in German. If we combine the two axes, axis, we get a table having roughly four squares, making reference to the localization of the core intersubjective processes. So uh, it would be uh, it would be uh, intrapersonal. We, we uh, usually uh, philosopher and uh, and and scientist uh, focused on intrapersonal, interpersonal on the axis uh, from the self to the uh, uh, to the other or from the others to the self. Uh, the vertical axis is the axis of embodiment, it's, uh, more uh, disembodied, uh, like subjectivity, mind, etc. Uh, subject or subjects, subject on the left side, subjects on the on the left side, or more embodied or corporeal, affective uh, uh, beings. So uh, 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 combining the two directions, we could roughly speak about these four categories of theories which are locating the core intersubjective processes. It's not about the self or about the other, it's about the, the communication, or the exchange, the relation uh, between them. But in this uh, exchange, one or the other, the self or the others can have more or less weight. And uh, the, the theories are, uh, are uh, correspondingly uh, uh, are different. And sometimes incompatible, we can consider them incompatible. Uh, 
So I thought this tool could be rough when it comes to categorizing the many versions of the concept of intersubjectivity in phenomenology and other philosophical traditions, analytic philosophy, pragmatism. It has, in my opinion, at least two merits. The first is that intersubjectivity appears less as a circumscribed concept and more as a region of possibilities. Moreover, it is a heuristic tool since it underlines the necessary existence of a kind of intersubjectivity, name, namely the interactional one, which have been obliterated by the dominance of the other types until now. The second one is that it could suggest that intersubjectivity is an even more complex phenomenon than we initially thought. And that we rather need to build an integrative dynamic framework that then to pick up a specific component and to oppose it to others. It is drafted having in mind the idea to aid future empirical research by describing observable indicators of intersubjectivity. In this presentation, my aim is then to show that the concept of intersubjectivity structurally includes elements pertaining to interaction, the fourth, uh, the fourth square, uh, bottom uh, right, uh, pre more precisely, a strong version of interaction, of social interaction, which involves action in the actual world. Uh, for the, the strong version, the, this idea of the, at least the term of strong version of interaction, I took it from, uh, from Sean, Sean Gallagher and Tom Frost. Uh, but probably I use it, use it in a slightly different uh, sense. The first uh, section towards interaction, the Husserlian path. Um, we, in Husserl's phenomenology, constitution has to be the work of a singular ego carried out inside its own sphere of originality. I try to analyze this from a, uh, sorry, this form of solipsis and argued that the difficulties of the theory of constitution will be lifted once the other self and the community uh, that they are engendering together are not thought of only in terms of representation. In order to overcome the representational framework in which the constitutive process apparently are taking place, at least they have been described like that, uh, I dealt with the concept of intersubjectivity as a system of transitions from cognitive representation to modes of encounter, probably non-representational modes of encounter. I'm not sure about this term. We can discuss about it. Uh, but uh, certainly it's a, it's a system of transition, uh, transitions. Uh, intersubjectivity cannot be thought without these dynamics of going from someone to some body else going in one direction and going in other direction or maybe multiple directions. And you, anyhow, uh, I think the phenomenology should describe this, this transition and uh, uh, phenomenology did a good job un, uh, until now in actually in, in, in elucidating this, uh, uh, many of these aspects. Uh, I will skip a paragraph. Husserl expresses the new view in a text written in 1932, a text considered a beginning, but a fundamental one. I'm making here a parenthesis. I, I'm using uh, a part of my researches from, from, uh, uh, from after the year 2000. Uh, this one precisely uh, is from, uh, 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 very much inspired by a paper that I gave, and then then an article, but the paper I gave it in Minsk in 2005, and uh, given the actual political circumstances, I always 
remember how our colleagues from Belarus received us in uh, the, uh, uh, with warm in um, in Minsk. One year after that, their their university had been uh, closed down by the dictatorial authoritarian regime in uh, in Belarus, and they moved to they had to move to uh, to Vilnius. Uh, it was just a parenthesis to to keep in mind some some facts that are surrounding us. Uh, okay, who expresses? Okay, uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the change of paradigm was not obvious because Husserl maintained the basic aspect of his theory of constitution. What is changed, what is in fact that the representational subjectivity acquires the dimensions of will and action and becomes a new kind of subject, not only a practical subject, but an acting subject per se. So I, in fact, I was trying in several texts, not only this one, but in other two, point to this acting subject per se, the, the, the real subject, taking into account the real subject, not only the mind, the subjectivity, uh, that we can read about it uh, or see it in a picture, in a movie, etc. Uh, it's about real, uh, real uh, individuals in a, a real, uh, world in real circumstances. Can we incorporate this dimension into our analysis? That would be the question. This major change does not entail simply adding a new stratum of objectivity from without. On the contrary, it unfolds from the most elementary levels of experience. First of all, the experience is not defined as a pure field of data, a certain interest always inhabits it. Thought, the ego of interest is appealed to and awakened. What is experienced is in fact what attracts me. Certainly the ego can also resist the appeal. A new key is used to distinguish between different phenomenological forms of the same experience. The, I quote the function or the non-function related to an activity. Accordingly, what is experienced can be thematized in different modes, primary, secondary, or it can simply escape thematization altogether. The empathic experience, uh, if we consider it the, the core intersubject experience, has to be described in the same manner. The other is an object of experience, and this is why I am absorbed in him. I am living his life a present I am experiencing him as a person in flesh, and I am doing that in my perceptual world, in the actual special field of my perceptual now. Uh, I'm, I am quoting slash paraphrasing here uh, the text written by Husserl in the 20s and the 30s. The, uh, from, from the, the three volumes on intersubjectivity. The, the presentation of the other presents me the other as having himself a personal life. This can be pa passive, I see the other, but nothing attracts me to it. It remains in the background of my perceptual life or active. When it is active, it means that I am consenting and I am submitting myself to the other person in the mode of quasi living with the, the other means that I submit myself by a presentation to his experience, to his thinking, to his evaluation, to his action. Uh, this, I become his accomplice, his partner, would, would, would probably we would say, so maybe more than a simple, the, the, the mere partner. I take in charge his validities, his judgments, as if they were mine. So this description uh, that uh, always sounds so actual for me, but, uh, and, and I am a little bit astonished that uh, people haven't took more seriously the fact that who's speaking about actual people, 
but actual people in 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 uh, in the in the in the actual world. Uh, a common world is brought about throughout the coincidence of the egos in their fields of appearances. But an action, a practical project, cannot be taken in charge. The will of the other given in an presentation is not coincident with mine. When I got out of the coincidence with the other ego, my will remains unaltered, and so it is for the will which ends itself in an action or is deposed in, the, in a work. We have here an essential difference between doxa and praxis. This does not mean that the doxa does not have any role in the interplay of active subjects. The doxa has to be understood in the milieu of the praxis. It serves the action, it, it is reconfigured by it. The theoretical implications of the distinction between doxa and praxis are going far beyond the clarification of the role of representation in the phenomenological theory of intersubjectivity. The fact that Husserl has stressed the importance of a common objective world for the constitution of community and sociality does not affect the specificity and irreducibility of the will and therefore of the action and does not imply the different volition pertaining to different subjects uh, that different volition pertaining to different subjects can simply overlap as do the convictions or opinions regarding the objective world. The community remains essentially plural, a place of a constant struggle between different or even opposite volitions. Also another aspect, this oppos the opposition and the, the irreducibility of the other's will and the oppositions, uh, these are important for describing sociality and uh, uh, and more more fundamentally to to understand the core intersubjective processes. Moreover, a phenomenology of communication, which would be able to describe the genesis of the original act of reciprocal communication, becomes possible. Empathy. Uh, allows me to inscribe myself into the subjective being of the other. The alter ego becomes a you, being apprehended as another me, the other is seen as a subject, that is, as a depository of her own acts and powers. He can see, move, and push, etc., this object or any other. For me, his or her acts, uh, have the equivocal character of expression. They are an external expression of interiority, an announcement which has an impact on me, even if the other does not have the, this intention. But communication is not a simple effect that determines the other to do something. If we would be so, communication would be nothing else than manipulation. Communication means that I have the intention to communicate and that I am perceived and understood as such by the other. The other with whom I am related through empathy understands that I express my interiority. Empathy, which is not developed as intention to communicate, is not yet communication. This is what what Husserl says in the, in the text that I am commenting, uh, that I was commenting. Husserl distinguishes between the effects of communication, the other does this or that, takes in charge my knowledge, my desire, my will, etc., and the mediated acts which makes it possible. The specificity of the act of communication resides in the fact that I connect my desire to a verbal expression. The other understand my verbal expression as such, and also he understands, the other understands that I am addressing him. He becomes my interlocutor and I become his. Sociality is found in this stratified activity through an active perception, which becomes empathy. I direct myself to the other with the intention to motivate, to determine his acts. 
I am addressing him in order to share with him my knowledge or my practical project. I make him understand what I am telling him when I am addressing him. The actual connection of this interlocution, interlocution community underlies any sociality. The linguistic bond, I quote, the linguistic bond is the fundamental form of the communicative unification, the original form of a particular coincidence between me and the other. That between any individual and any other individual, there is unification through what is said. My will to communicate, my act bearing a sense enters into the others, uh, given to me, others given uh, into the other, which is given to me in a presentation, who appropriates that sense and answers me, even if his answer is simply a polite one. In order to understand the constitution of community as a community of will and action, the theory of constitution had to, had to be adapted. The need to take the other's experience into account and to provide a coherent phenomenological anal analysis of this specific type of experience has put a great pressure on the Cartesian presuppositions of whose theory of givenness of consciousness. Accordingly, the theory of constitution initially forged in accordance with the, its Brentanian Kantian heritage on a cognitive and ecological basis had to integrate the praxis as a necessary condition for the access to the other's consciousness. Therefore, Husserl operated conceptual changes that opened the discussion about the possibility of taking in charge or not the ideas or actions of the other. Not only the ideas, but also the actions of the other, a phenomenon which is explained much better as a modification of the primordial sphere. The others do not appear simply as others which are contributing to the constitution of the thing in a doxy manner. If it would be so, they would be only presupposed and they should be somehow identical to me. But modifying the object of our experience together, we are modifying ourselves. We are modifying our primordial egos, each one, each, each of us, because of the fact that the transformation is common in every ego emerges a unity of common transformation. For everyone who communicates, there are essential transformations that modify the interlocutor's stock of knowledge, feelings, wills, and their capacity to act. And actually, their, their actions. Uh, communication is thus essentially connected with a transformation considered in its genuine sense, it of course is occurs, occurs in situation where there are actions directed towards the transformation of a thing, which entails a further common transformation of the egos. Through the introduction of communication and transformation in the discussion about community, phenomenology takes a resolute distance from any of the naturalistic views of the self and the others. The alternative individualism or atomism, holism, is evidently a false one. Community and sociality can be thought of, thought of only as an interactive, on an interactive basis. Will, action, communication, and common transformation become the quadruple conceptual root for the phenomenological concept of community. Community does not consist either in related individuals or supra-individuals objectivities. It is not an object, but a dynamic form of life guided from inside by a teleological ideas, idea. Who shall succeed to overcome the modern distinction between representation and will, and he also succeeds in changing the purely ontological or atomistic holistic vision of community into a community considered as a plurality of communicating persons. The continuity between I, other, and others between the sphere of proximity and that of distance or mediation is thought of systematically 
and with the preservation of the specificity of each constitutive level. He provides us not only a comprehensive and complete philosophical concept of community, but also a basis for the study of concrete human interaction, which is of interest for us. Uh, from this basis, I would, I thought to integrate, but uh, finally I didn't, uh, a discussion about the structures of co-engagement. Uh, so uh, moving the discussion, moving the, the focus more on the, on the, on the practical, on the interactional, interactional side. Uh, I, but I didn't integrate it in this presentation. Uh, I have a, uh, a PowerPoint that I presented in a conference in Olomos, if you are interested. Towards interaction, the conversational path. So um, this discussion about Husa was only some, somehow um, a preparation uh, of the of the of the terrain for investigating investigating concrete human interactions. So this is the conclusion we have to investigate more. Uh, we have to focus more uh, on uh, on concrete human interactions. Uh, Okay, in this section, I intend to bring forward another path through which the concept of interaction becomes unavoidable for the understanding of intersubjectivity and sociality. When sociality is described in investigative phenomenologically, the goal cannot be other but to see the social reality as developing in the here and now, along with the entire set of embodied agents' practical interventions. It will be less of a stable given reality, but more of an action-oriented possibilityful environment. Obviously, the research method of this object should be adjusted according to its dynamic and uh, demanding nature. It is also true that this new way of envisioning social world would not have been possible without the emergence of new research methodologies in social sciences. As uh, conversational analysis or interaction is linguistics. I'll skip uh, this paragraph. Leaving aside the transcendental approach to intersubjectivity, Alfred Schutz allowed the phenomenologist to open the path to common everyday experience. The social reality became structurally and intrinsic intrinsically manifold, multiple, but that one realm of reality kept having a privileged status compared to the others. Schultz, for example, characterized the world of social action as paramount to reality because of the constitutive processes of the experiences in time, space, sociality, and meaning involved in action. He proposed the processes of typification as what constitutes a meaningful social world around us. His key concept is that of the world of daily life, which the wide awake grown up grown up man who acts in it and upon it amidst his fellows man experiences with the natural attitude as a reality this is the the you know the the the, the what he yeah the 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 the, the key concept the 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 aim of, of the of the of the analysis, um, uh, but this this uh, um, conceptualization has good parts and not very good parts. Uh, um, it's it, it's a good part that uh, we sp he was speaking about the world of daily life uh, about uh, um, uh, individuals who are acting in and upon it uh, together with other uh, fellow men. Uh, and, uh, but uh, what was unfortunate, a little bit unfortunate, it was that he was focusing only on, on uh, grown up, grown up men. So at least that, that expression, it's, it's uh, unfortunate. Uh, so, uh, uh, Schutz's phenomenological investigation have been the starting point of a shift from a vision of sociality based on members' knowledge 
to one in which theories problems are everyday people problems and that these are best researched by examining how everyday people go about addressing and solving those problems. Thus, interpretive social sociologists were interested in how members solve everyday social challenges using, using types. That, uh, 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 that was the beginning of, uh, of many uh, developments in the so in social phenomenology, in the phenomenological sociology, uh, um, and this that was as um, um, uh, only the uh, was the starting point of some uh, some um, um, invention of uh, different methods of investigation, which uh, apparently have no relation to phenomenology anymore. But I think it is important to to go back to the roots, to the phenomenological roots. That's why no. That's why I'm thinking, I'm, I'm presenting this part. Garfinkel continued the Schutzian line of criticizing Parsons for neglecting the subjective perspective of, of the constitution of social order. He did justice to ordinary social actors and their pragmatic competences. In analyzing the self, organ, the self-organizing process of social orders, Garfinkel mainly concentrated on two aspects. On the one hand, regarding common situation, he took interest in the so-called breaching experiments. Uh, I intended and direct irritations of interaction processes, the interruption of which brings up the constitutive character of the taken for granted. On the other hand, regarding routines of working processes in formal organization, Garfinkel used the ethno methods, as he called them, for the possible accountability of formal rules. Uh, leading them theme for Garfinkel's work, in fact, the fact that social reality should be understood not only as a sum of orders of action, but above all, as a result of continuously situated daily practices, proved, fruit, proved fruitful for a large number of sociological studies. This holds true, first and foremost, for the use of his perspective on the fundamental processual and self-organizing character of social reality in studies on verbal and non-verbal interaction processes, as in the case of conversation analysis. The ethnomethodological analysis of interaction, therefore, was concerned with unpacking interaction by revealing the organization of action. Uh, Ethnomethodologies characterize uh, this organization as sequential. They analyze action by inspecting how actors orient themselves toward an immediately prior action and how they, their own action provides the context for each next action. Already in the 40s, Garfinkel developed a basic concept of the organization of practical actions through which intersubjectivity is achieved. Since the 60s, this organization is described as sequentiality. With this concept, Garfinkel provided a way not only to capturing the organization of actions from participants' points of view, but also to situate the meaning of an action in the organization itself of the action. Harvey Sachs, who initially worked with Garfinkel, uh, developed and applied conversation analysis to reveal the organization of action. The recursive relationship between action was seen as the basis of meaning to arise moment by moment. In this view, meaning is predetermined, not external to action, but it arises due to the temporalization of action in context. The analysis consists in short fragments of talk that are transcribed to aid, to aid the uncovering of the organization of utterances. Uh, sex goes more in the direction of, of uh, linguistics. Uh, but his contribution is very important. Thus, the sociological investigation could be relevant in two different ways. One approached as an empirical problem to solve, another as a practical member's problem. An alternative view of sociality is gradually emerging, in which dynamic, small-scale, unscripted interaction are taking 
the center stage in the investigation. So uh, if the first section was has had as a conclusion that we have to investigate, but it was more theoretical conclusion, the, the concrete interaction between individuals, uh, this second, uh, second section um, um, goes a little bit deeper in, in pointing to this uh, dynamic small scale unscripted spontaneous that means spontaneous interactions uh, and the methodologies that have been elaborated uh, uh, for uh, analyzing them just a, just a second so the third section is intersubject it's called intersubjectivity as organization of action if we focus on the intricacies of social interaction, the key concept becomes that of the interaction in and through which the embodied differentiated agents are aligning themselves, getting in and out of collaborative activity, forming peer relations in a complex activity involving the management and production of token interaction. Agents often engage in spontaneous unscripted activities and a large part of their efforts is directed toward the alleviation of interactional difficulties. Sorry, I forgot about this. Okay. Uh, these interactions are unfolding moment by moment in every context. This is how social worlds are emerging. The walls are popping up and disappear with ease. What keeps them together, as long as they are kept together, is not the awareness of the subject, nor her knowledge pro production, but the continuous management and production of talking interaction. It is not a matter of understanding the social order, not so much, uh, but of simply propelling and maintaining the in-role element of the activity at hand. It's a matter of practical competency. A theory of action must come to terms with both the details of language use and the ways in which the social, cultural, material, and sequential structure of the environment uh, where action occurs figure into its organization. The primordial site for the analysis of human language, cognition, and action consists of a situation in which multiple participants are attempting to carry out courses of action in concert with each other or not, through talk while attending to both the larger activities that their current actions are embedded in and relevant phenomena in their surroundings. That would be, uh, that, that would be, uh, the, the horizon that, to which we arrived. We started with simple, with, with subjects, with sub, in the sense of subjectivity, and uh, 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 we, we moved gradually to this, to this vision, uh, to this view uh, about uh, multiple participants carrying out courses of action in concert with each other and so forth, as I describe it here. That would be for the, um, I was, um, I was thinking that I would have time to, to insert a, a, a discussion. This vision, this vision, yes, this, this, this framework that I uh, has, its problems and one potential problems and or it is interesting how this problem could be could be solved and uh, once we are taking into account the action very seriously and we try to integrate it into a theoretical conceptual framework uh, we're arriving to this uh, this uh, dichotomy this separation between uh, 
they say knowledge and action. And from this issue uh, on, we can uh, uh, we can uh, uh, discuss this idea of answering by doing. Uh, I'm not sure I will have uh, will have time to to present um, all 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 this uh, subsection. Uh, um, the, the idea is to uh, uh, that there are many ways. I, I'll try it anyway. Uh, there are many ways in which one can provide an answer in an interactive situation. I described uh, until now uh, uh, above. I described above the the interactive situation. We acknowledge that the individual has knowledge how when the answer is action oriented. Among the various answer, answer someone could provide, there is a distinctive one which consists in doing effectively that action. The answer is embedded in the action itself. We say then that the learner is learning by doing, like uh, in, in training for sport, uh, in sports player. Is that action still an answer or it is just, uh, just an action? Uh, uh, I will move a little bit further. Uh, so, uh, in order to avoid the difficulties uh, of of combining of mixing uh, knowledge and uh, knowledge how and knowledge that uh, uh, knowledge and action, etc., we uh, together with uh, one of my colleagues. Uh, we propose to let aside the discussion about the mental states of the individual agent and to take into account the whole interactive situation, uh, relying on uh, Charles Goodwin, ethnographic study of conversation, Gallagher proposed a fuller description of the interactive situation in which contexts are relational that he frames as a shared agentive situation or a shared context within which agents encounter each other. It includes, so in describing this, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, interactive situation, it includes uh, the gesture and facial expression of the other person, their bodily movement, posture, and proximity, the intonation of voice event, uh, the other's attention, the means to grab it, for joint attention, the temporal flow uh, or rhythm of interaction, instituted norms, social rules, roles and identities, knowledge of completed actions, knowledge of person-specific traits, preferences, attitudes, the rich material environment. All this, we should have a theory or a conceptual framework to integrate all this aspect. These are not, the idea is these are not secondary. Usually, uh, uh, this, all these aspects are considered somehow, uh, um, somehow uh, as belonging to a background. Uh, the idea would be that they are part of the interactive uh, 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 situation and uh, they should be uh, taken into account as such. The model inspired by the conversational analysis offers not only a complete virtually exhaustive exhaustive model of the interactive situation, but also possibly a new way of understanding its embedded plurality of ways of answering a question. A single action brings together different kinds of resources. They are classified as uh, uh, as follow. And this, I, 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 I try, we try to give another, another classification. Individual actions are constructed by assembling diverse materials, including language, structure, prosody, and visible embodied displays. Semio then, semiotically charged aspects, such as maps, when in included within local action, incorporate ways of knowing and acting upon the world that have been inherited from predecessors. And new actions is, is built by performing systematic selective operation on these public configuration configurations of resources that that is that is the the most important part how to describe the new action uh, i think that uh, uh, this framework 
could be able to describe uh, to describe uh, the new action, I would say as such, uh, not as not as a, an outcome of the mere intention of someone, but uh, as a, a systematic selective operation uh, on a public configuration of resources. Goodwin's interaction is model manages to capture not only the entirety of the situation, but also its dynamics. He emphasizes that visible public de deployment of multiple semiotic fields that mutually elaborate each other. For example, spoken language builds signs within the stream of speech, gesture use the body in the particular way, while posture and orientation use the body in another way. This kind of dynamic interactive ontology, ontology uh, with uh, sketch in this section could easily be, I think, an example of this particular type of intersubject that I named interactional. Uh, as a conclusion, I try to show that the concept of intersubjectivity structurally include or includes or may include elements pertaining to interaction, more precisely a strong version of interaction, which involves action in the actual world. I presented two paths, which in my opinion, led phenomenology to identify, describe and integrate in, very, in a degree or another elements of interaction, of this inter kind of interaction that was possible through the underlining of the embodied approach both on the more subjective and the, and the more objective sides of the intersubjective experience. Uh, this particular type of experience, as we can, if we can still call it experience, probably the term encounter or something similar would be better. Or this particular type of experience is better described as emerging in the actual direct fluid spontaneous interaction between two or more embodied situated individuals. It is enacted in the stream of verbal and co-verbal, postural, gestural, etc., embodied and symbolic interactions. It is obvious, I think, that this shift or change of focus has methodological implications. I advocated, therefore, an alliance between phenomenology and research tools for to and refine in the conversational analysis and interactionist linguistics and other areas. The approach drafted above is not exempt of difficulties. I, I may I acknowledge that uh, I sketched the discussion concerning one of them, uh, I, well, namely that to can we answer by doing. So uh, this this issue of of integrate action reality as such cannot be easily integrated into a theory. Uh, so we have. But, but I, I, will let, I will let other comments uh, for the discussion. As a final conclusion, I would mention the fact that this approach would simply not be possible without tight collaboration between philosopher and, and scientist. What I'm trying to do a little bit in, in Cluj. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for uh, your attention. Muchísimas gracias, Professor Ion. Eh, ha sido una conferencia muy interesante y tenemos un, unos minutos para preguntas del público. Eh, los que están en Facebook pueden hacer sus preguntas eh, a través de los comentarios y los que están presentes, si alguno tiene alguna pregunta, eh, basta levantar la mano en, en la opción de reacciones y yo le doy la palabra. Eh, si, si no hay preguntas del público por ahora, este, yo quisiera hacer una, una pregunta, eh, Ion. Je voudrais te, te demander. ¿Qué eh, rapport, qué relación puede eh, eh, o, o cómo un fait con un, un, un fait une, 
un travail interdisciplinaire. No? Qu'est-ce qui se passe avec l'ordre le, le, transcendental? La, la, ah. pers la perspective transcendentale, qu'est-ce qui se passe quand on, on fait appel à des sciences empiriques? Mi pregunta va por, por qué pasa con lo transcendental una vez que eh, apelamos a, a, a las ciencias empíricas para, para esta renovación del concepto de intersubjetividad. C'est ça ma, ma question, Ion. Should I answer now or? Yes. Yes, okay, okay. Uh, I, it's, it's a huge question, but I, I, would, uh, I would answer in a practical uh, way. Uh, I will not enter into, you know, very complicated discussions. I think that the transcendental perspective did fulfilled his his job did his job until now the transcendental uh, perspective delivered us somehow may uh, open our eyes about about the uh, the transcendental ego and the, the intersubject trans, intersubject transcendental intersubjective uh, uh, structures but um, uh, for empirical research and for advancing our our investigation for the moment uh, we can and we should leave it aside so we, we it's it's a it's a question of focus we should simply not focus focus on 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 it uh, maybe it will be one day the the case to come back and to to see it in another way if we will be if we will be uh, we will have been if we will be so how to say uh, at, at least uh, as as genial as Husserl was <laughs> but otherwise <laughs> Otherwise, um, we have to take into account, and Husserl uh, in the in the in the first section, I think I, I provided some some um, some insights from from Husserl's text. Uh, Husserl was uh, uh, very favorable to take into account the real persons in real world. That is actually we cannot do theorize without uh, without doing without doing that. Our theory has to go until, until that stage of taking into account real persons in concrete live, living situations uh, and so forth. Okay, thank you, thank you Ian. Um, there is a question from Facebook. Is that reflection as paramount both handicapped people and not handicapped people? It is to save for the entire human condition. The question is in the chat. Si tu, si tu veux lire uh, en anglais. I, I should have. Uh, I haven't opened the, the Facebook. No, no, no. In the uh, si tu, uh, si tu or chat, yeah, in, in, in yes, I will, I will, I will, in Zoom. Uh, just a moment, I, 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 I lost you a little bit. La question in says si, yes, si. in chat, just, uh, just a second, uh, it's better to read it. Uh, is the question from Rosemary, the last no. one? Luo, no, Luo. Luo. Okay, okay. We just, take just the question in order then. Mel Rima. Rima. Uh, is that reflection as paramount? Is that reflection as paramount both hand, handicapped people and not handicapped people? It is to say for the entire human conditions. I'm not sure what. Ref, what reflection is uh, 
our colleague uh, referring to. Je crois uh, que c'est tout ton, ton exposé. Ah, the, 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 yes, I, uh, that was one, one of the goals, one of the aim to take into account real persons, uh, because maybe it was not clear, but if we go, um, if we uh, um, succeed in, in, in discussing, uh, a real life situation involving real persons, then all the structures or you know, the, the, the models that we used until now, uh, probably they have, to, they have to change. And certainly we cannot rely on the you know, adult grown up man as the, 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 the prototype of the subject. We have to have a much more nuanced um, um, view of the subject if you if we still use this this word. And that would be that could be the, the child and there are many uh, analyze man, many uh, researches on 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 children. Uh, the conversational analysis actually uh, started uh, so one of the key uh, paper is on two afro uh, afro american girls playing hopscotch and uh, having a conversation and being recorded and the recording transcribed that was the you know, somehow the, the 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 beginning so um the child any any persons so the adult well socialized well integrated man is not the prototype anymore and uh, uh, the interactions uh, uh, when we have to we have to take into account the specific situation in micro analysis in small scale analysis what is happening in that or that or that situation and uh, the models could be different from one situation to another. We should not rely, how to say, a priori on a, on a model. We should elaborate more uh, models uh, uh, from below, paying more attention to, which many phenomenologists actually did in, in the past. But uh, this, this task, um, yeah, cannot be uh, cannot be uh, stopped now. Yes, I would say, uh, 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 you know, uh, handicapped people. I haven't thought until now to kind of project research on that. I have a, but uh, the way they are dealing with each other and with, with the norms, institutions, and the environment. That would be a uh, that would be a very interesting uh, project. Excuse-moi, on n'a pas beaucoup de temps, mais eh, Celia veut te poser une question. Si puedes hacerla en inglés, Celia, por favor. Tienes el micro apagado. Lo tienes que ahí está. Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your for your presentation. Uh, I'm sorry, I don't want to steal time from everyone else because I will have my opportunity to, to comment on your paper. I just wanted to ask you um, something uh, very uh, specific about if I, what you suggested in the last part of the paper, because if I'm not mistaken, you said that in this interactional model, um, you can, so it's possible to describe what a new action is so I was wondering how can we describe this idea of new action in the interactional model or in general the notion of action because I find the, the, the very idea of action very complicated. It's not simply to understand what, an, what is an action because uh, on the first, first, first of all, you have to distinguish an action from a natural fact, something as possibly explainable. So you can say, or uh, maybe we can explain it by recording to the idea of a fiat, but fiat is not always conscious. So, um, so there is a problem of what an action is 
how an action can be, how the unity of an action is constituted, and then how can we differentiate actions? So I don't know if you can say something about that because I I I, I was not planning on talk, talking yes, about this have, in my comments. We have uh, we we'll, we'll have a we'll have a discussion. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you now. Thank you very very much for the for the commentary and uh, there are a lot of things to discuss there, there. <laughs> a lot of lot of things and uh, i'm grateful to you um, uh, about uh, the the idea was to have somehow another approach on on the interactive situation in which is not based on on you know, the common concepts that we use in describing a situation, such as that the intention of someone, someone had the intention to do and uh, uh, or mind sharing or something like that, to see the situation as it unfolds it somehow by itself, but mm -hmm. not from exterior, but from, so, uh, uh in in this situation these are what i had in mind it was not clear in the in the in the presentation did what i had in mind was this kind of situations uh in which we do not know from the beginning what will happen okay. in which the the course of action uh due to the interaction of the of 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 the several individuals or more more individuals and of the other factors that I enumerated, the 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 final course of interaction is not known from the uh, is not known from the onset uh, because somehow a theory of action uh, previous theorists of action somehow. Uh, well, uh, presuppose this idea that um, there is a structure, a social structure, and always some somehow the same kind of deterministic uh, or predictable course of action. Uh, at the maybe if we if we if we discuss it. At the large scale, the scale of society, maybe it is that I I will not discuss that. Uh, it's another another discussion. But when we are looking at the the small scale interactions, we are uh, seeing always surprising things happening. How this can be? How is that? Uh, how is that uh, possible? And a new action should be um, should be identified as such as a category is not the same as the previous actions on which it, it is built it's something it seems something different between because it has you know um, its specificity its phenomenological specificity if we if i may so new action as such new because that that would uh, describing what already existed is not is not difficult it's difficult to describe what emerges yeah. as an as a new action in a in a certain in a certain context and so, uh, uh, sorry no mm -hmm. according to you then not every action would have this anticipatory structure uh, anticipatory structure uh, <laughs> uh, i mean like the, the setting of a goal um uh, we should yes yes you have in mind the individual action okay. And, uh, oh, okay, okay yes there is temporalization there is temporalization of more or less uh, mm. of of uh, in, in various degree of every individual action but when we are acting together mm. uh, the we that anticipation is not planning Hmm. That's just there, there's just a possible some a range of possibilities, a horizon of possibilities. Which of these possibilities will be fulfilled? It does not depend on the individual. And uh, with that, probably we began an, another the discussion that we'll have later. Okay. 
Thank you very much. Eso. Yeah. Thank you. Muchas gracias, Celia. Puedes retomar el, la discusión eh, luego de tu comentario. Eh, nos hemos pasado el tiempo, así que vamos a hacer una pausa de cuatro minutos. On va a hacer un pause de cuatro minutos y después escuchamos a Tania. ¿De acuerdo? Four minutes. Four minutes. Oh, ok, ok, it's not much. Ok. Muy bien, eh, vamos a retomar los comentarios. Eh, esta vez tenemos a Tania Yáñez y a Celia Cabrera. Espérenme un segundo. Eh, la profesora Tania es licenciada en filosofía por la Universidad Autónoma de Querétaro, Querétaro, perdón, es magíster en filosofía de la cultura por la Universidad Michoacana de San Nicolás de Hidalgo. Actualmente lleva a cabo su tesis doctoral sobre afectividad y ética en la fenomenología de Husser en la Universidad Autónoma de México y trabaja como investigadora en la Universidad Pontificia de México. Es miembro del Círculo Latinoamericano de Fenomenología Clarín. Escuchamos, Tania. Gracias, gracias, doctora Mariana. Uh, bueno, uh, many thanks to the professor Ion for sharing uh, your interesting thoughts and insights. I hope my presentation had some valuable ideas for the discussion topic. Y bueno, también quiero agradecer a los miembros del Círculo Fe Peruano de Fenomenología y Hermenótica por su generosa y amable invitación, a la doctora Rosemary, a la doctora Mariana y a los organizadores del encuentro por eh, su muy profesional trabajo de organización. Eh, titulé a mi comentario Sentimientos y Acción, la dimensión axiológica de la constitución de lo social. Voy a comenzar a la lectura. El texto del profesor Ion ofrece algunas reflexiones sobre la necesidad de ampliar el marco de comprensión del concepto de intersubjetividad. Primero, recoge intuiciones de la fenomenología de Husserl y luego integra algunos componentes que a su juicio, aunque no son centrales para el fundador de la fenomenología, sí son imprescindibles para lograr una teoría de la intersubjetividad integral que sea punto de encuentro entre fenomenología y ciencias sociales. Se trata en específico de integrar un concepto fuerte de interacción que permita señalar y describir que la relación intersubjetiva tiene un carácter temporal y progresivo, en donde la esfera de la abolición y la acción juegan un rol central para la constitución de comunidades. En mi comentario pondré el foco en la primera parte de su análisis, puesto que, aunque funge solamente como punto de partida para la elaboración de su argumento, me parece que requiere la introducción de un matiz importante que él mismo sugiere cuando alude al ego como ego de interés. Me refiero a la profundización de un aspecto que el doctor Ion caracteriza como el paso de la doxa a la praxis en la comprensión que Husserl hace de la intersubjetividad. Paso para el que es necesaria sostiene la incorporación de otros modos de dación o de conciencia que superen el marco de la representación. Él se refiere a la necesidad de incorporar la dimensión no objetivante de la conciencia intencional en la constitución del otro. En concreto, a la praxis como un ámbito de la vida de la subjetividad que se encuentra en patente contraste con la doxa. Afirma, a common word is brought about throughout the coincidence of the ego of and of their fields of appearances. But an action, a practical project, cannot be taken in church. 
the will of the other give in, in a presentation is not coincident with mine. When I go off from the coincidence with the other ego, my will remains unaltered. And it is the same for the will which ends itself in an action or is the post in a work. Si bien este viraje no implica renunciar a la objetividad del mundo, sí habrá algunos problemas relativos a la objetividad de lo constituido intersubjetivamente en el género de vivencias no objetivantes, a saber, los valores y los fines. Objetos que no es posible constituir en las vivencias de la esfera de la doxa. Eh, en ese sentido, el señalamiento que haré tiene como propósito introducir en el análisis de la investigación sobre la constitución de las comunidades algunas ideas que me parece que complementan las indagaciones del doctor Ion y que además apuntan a relaciones eh, a priori de la vida de conciencia. Junto a la aclaración de la dimensión de la praxis, hace falta señalar que la esfera de la afectividad también es un ámbito central en la constitución de comunidades. Si bien estas se forman a partir de actos sociales, el primero de los cuales es la comunicación de la intención volitiva o el acto comunicativo, es necesario, a mi juicio, atender al trasfondo afectivo a partir del cual los individuos que conforman comunidades estiman ciertos valores que fungen como fundamento de sus voliciones y de sus acciones. Pienso que poner atención y describir la función de la afectividad y de la valoración en los actos sociales y en las interacciones públicas permite comprender no solo cómo se constituyen las comunidades, sino también en qué consisten las formas culturales específicas de comunidades concretas y además qué valores pueden ser cribados y sustituidos, criticados, al impedir formas de vida y, relación, y de relación racionales. De modo que una teoría de la intersubjetividad ha de, acoger, ha de acoger como variable de análisis la afectividad en su amplia diversidad, instintos, pulsiones, sentimientos, actos valorativos. Pues justamente es, un, es este uno de los modos de encuentro de carácter no repre, representacional de los que echan falta el doctor Ion. Además de que no es posible dar cuenta de lo que es la acción y de los actos sociales sin dar cuenta de cómo los sentimientos posibilitan al menos dos fenómenos. Por un lado, el descubrimiento de las cualidades de valor de las cosas del mundo y con ello, de la experiencia de interés que mueve a aspirar a ciertos bienes y a tenerlos como fines. Y por otro, de los singulares modos de vinculación intersubjetiva que manifiestan los llamados sentimientos morales. El amor, el odio, la confianza, la vergüenza, el orgullo, la envidia, etc. Que son vivencias que no solo revelan la constitución de la propia identidad personal, eh, que como el doctor Ion pone de relieve en su eh, texto, tiene un carácter progresivo, sino que también permite eh, comprender formas de comunidad específicas, por ejemplo, la familia. Para apoyar esta idea voy a recordar algunas de las tesis básicas de Husserl en torno a los sentimientos y el modo en que están relacionados con la acción. Mm, me centraré entonces en el, la, en el primer tema que enuncio e intentaré vincularlo con la relación que el doctor Ion hace entre acto social, comunicación e interacción. Una de las tesis centrales de la teoría de la, de la conciencia afectiva que Husserl sostiene es que es en la experiencia de los sentimientos, que son vivencias intencionales, en donde se mienta algo, pero no solo como algo que existe, sino como algo que tiene un grado de valor. Es decir, que en ellos se revelan las cualidades de valor de los objetos del mundo. Dicho de otro modo, al sentir afectivamente la subjetividad es consciente de las cualidades de valor y a partir de ella tiene interés por cosas y aspira a ellas o las repudia. En ese sentido, la afectividad es una condición de la experiencia del valor y esta a su vez es el origen de la motivación que conduce a tender a algo. Lo que vincula el sentimiento con las vivencias volitivas es un nexo de motivación. Esta es la idea clave a partir de la que sugiero que hay que pensar el sentimiento y su función para la voluntad y la acción. Ya que la comunidad de voluntades, eso es lo que radica el vínculo intersubjetivo, eh, ya que la comunidad de voluntades es eso en lo que radica el vínculo intersubjetivo en el que el profesor Ion quiere poner énfasis. Esta comunidad, sugiero, se funda en un trasfondo afectivo que motiva el querer hacia estas o aquellas cosas que se estiman como valiosas se actúa en función de lo que se valora. Así, grosso modo, es posible decir que el sentimiento es el estrato que está fundado sobre la doxa y que permite la fundación de la praxis, 
es una bisagra que posibilita que la subjetiv subjetividad deje de ser un mero espectador de las propiedades tóxicas de los objetos, forma, tamaño, color, y se convierta en un espectador interesado en ellos y en sus propiedades axiológicas, y que tenga preferencia por unas cosas en lugar de otras, en función de su estimación de ellas, así como que pueda constituirlas como fines y motivar su voluntad para alcanzarlas. Ahora bien, tal como el profesor Ion explica, según la comprensión husserliana de lo social, la forma más básica de acto social es el de la comunicación de la intención volitiva, que comparte con las formas superiores de acto social la estructura de voluntades comunes. Aquí vale la pena citar un fragmento del espíritu común en donde Husserl explica que es un acto social. Cito a Husserl. En esta relación yo-tú, que se muestra a través de los actos sociales, Existe una unidad del aspirar o del específico querer, que abarca a ambos sujetos y en la que ambos se encuentran vinculados recíprocamente uno a otro, en una conciencia actual, para actuar recíprocamente uno sobre otro como sujetos de aspiraciones, esto es, para determinarse uno a otro hacia un obrar, o en su caso, hacia un padecer. En el aspirante estar dirigido uno hacia otro. Entonces, en un acto social hay una coincidencia en la aspiración, que comparten dos o más sujetos a partir de la que acuerdan propósitos o resoluciones a efectuar. Es justamente en la coincidencia de las vivencias volitivas en la que es manifiesto el trasfondo afectivo del acto social, puesto que la vivencia del aspirar o querer un bien en lugar de otro se funda en estimarlo como más valioso o valioso por sí mismo o por estar en relación con un valor mayor. Pero esta vivencia del tender a algo en su forma del aspirar, del desear o del querer, requiere una aclaración. En algunas de las ideas que Husserl presenta en sus lecciones de ética de 1920 y 1924 sobre la teoría del valor, se, se, aclara este, esta, se intenta hacer una aclaración de esta vivencia. La vivencia del aspirar no es un sentimiento, sino una vivencia de voluntad que entre comillas, presupone en algún sentido la experiencia pasada de un sentimiento en el cual se entregó un valor. Es decir, para vivir la aspiración a un bien se ha de tener una sedimentación por la que ese bien se estime como tal, algún indicio de tener por valioso en el aspirar y poder verificar en la valicepción, en la vivencia catadora, que en efecto ese objeto es valioso. Pues el aspirar no es tener el valor en presencia, sino la expectativa que se puede cumplir o no. Dicho de otro modo, si bien a la esencia del aspirar necesariamente pertenece una relación ideal con un cumplimiento del aspirar, con un alcanzar lo que se aspira, sin embargo, el aspirar mismo solo representa remotamente el valor y lo considera valioso. Pero la conciencia tiene experiencia originaria y siente, disfruta actualmente el valor solamente en el sentimiento. En la alegría o el goce que se experimenta al tener la presencia de un ser amado, por ejemplo, la vida de conciencia constata el valor de ese hecho. Ese goce motiva la aspiración a extender el tiempo en que esa persona está presente y motiva a efectuar acciones para que esa aspiración se cumpla y alcance su meta. Ahora bien, Siguiendo la definición de acto social de Husserl, es posible afirmar que si la unidad del aspirar es la estructura intencional básica en la que se funda un acto social, entonces me parece no es cosa menor atender a las vivencias afectivas que, suby que subyacen a esas aspiraciones o a cualquier otro tipo de vivencia o a cualquier otro tipo de vivencia evolutiva. Puesto que, a priori, es decir, por esencia, cualquier sujeto que experimente una vivencia de este tipo en el que se dirija un fin a una meta, lo haría para asumir estos como bienes de valor. Desde la perspectiva de la fenomenología trascendental de Husserl, se entiende que no solo la afectividad estaría intrincada intencionalmente con las vivencias prácticas por fundarlas, sino que además no cabría pensar esas vivencias prácticas del querer, deber, desear, aspirar, tender, sin una base axiológica. Por ello, el, lo, lo que he intentado señalar es que la teoría de la constitución del otro y de las comunidades no solamente tiene la necesidad de ser adaptada, como indica el profesor Ion, introduciendo la voluntad y la acción, sino también la fenomenología de la afectividad y también consideraciones de carácter ético 
que se funden en un concepto fenomenológico de razón. Para concluir, quisiera señalar una implicación que se puede obtener a partir de la relación entre afectividad y acción. La fenomenología no se reduce a ser mero discurso descriptivo, sino que aspira a ser también un discurso científico y en la medida en la que forja una teoría de la racionalidad, la filosofía fenomenológica posibilita, pero sobre todo exige una crítica de las valoraciones heredadas socialmente. Por eso considero que no hay que perder de vista esta esfera de la conciencia que he llamado un poco precisamente bisagra entre la doxia y la praxis, porque ella no solo es la condición de posibilidad de la captación del valor, sino también en cierta medida la posibilidad de su evaluación y por ende de la renovación de la vida personal, de las comunidades sociales y de la humanidad entera en última instancia, en la medida en que permite revisar y cribar los valores a partir de los cuales se constituye lo social. En ese sentido, el ejercicio de la racionalidad de los bienes asumidos socialmente no puede quedar al margen de la discusión intersubjetiva a partir de parámetros racionales. En ese sentido, no basta indagar sobre qué valores se construyen las comunidades. También es posible, y es una responsabilidad humana y filosófica, evaluarlos y criticarlos a partir de la razón. Esta es una de las ideas que Husserl se desarrolla en el libro eh, que se me conmemora con este encuentro académico. Los artículos de De Caiso, que en español hemos acogido bajo el título de Renovación del Hombre y la Cultura. Para finalizar entonces me permito una cita de Husserl donde afirma esta exigencia. Si pronunciamos un juicio reprobatorio sobre nuestra cultura, o sea, sobre la cultura con que nuestra humanidad se cultiva a sí misma y cultiva el mundo que la rodea, ella implica que creemos en una buena humanidad como posibilidad ideal. Encerrada en nuestro juicio, ya se implícita la creencia de una verdadera y auténtica humanidad como idea objetivamente válida, conforme a cuyo sentido ha de retomarse la cultura que existe de hecho, y tal ha de ser, obviamente, la meta de nuestros afanes reformadores. Y aquí concluiría mi, mi comentario. Muchísimas gracias, Tania. Vamos ahora a escuchar a Celia Cabrera. Ella es doctora en filosofía por la Universidad de Buenos Aires e investigadora asistente del Consejo Nacional de Investigaciones Científicas y Técnicas. Su área de investigación principal es la fenomenología husserliana, especialmente los análisis sobre la estructura y la génesis de la conciencia valorativa, la fenomenología de la voluntad, la ética y la teoría de la acción. Realizó estadías de investigación en el archivo Husserl de la Universidad de Colonia y en la Universidad Karl Franzens en Austria. Es autora de diversos artículos sobre esta temática, es coeditora del libro Fenomenología de la Vida Afectiva, junto con Micaela Seftel, y es miembro del grupo editor de Ideas. Escribe para la revista de filosofía moderna y contemporánea. Celia, te escuchamos. Bueno, muchas gracias por la, por la invitación. Eh, voy a hacer mi, mi comentario en inglés, eh, así el profesor eh, Ion puede eh, seguir eh, mi comentario y voy a compartir pantalla. I'm going to share my screen so you can follow my text in English and then I, I, I send a version Spanish in case I think uh, it's going to be available. So, you can see my screen now? Sí. Okay, thank you. Um, so my comment is um, actually a compendium of questions, <laughs> which you, you don't have to answer all of them today. But um, so I, I will begin. Um, Ion Copero's paper approaches the classical phenomenological topic of intersubjectivity in a new and interdisciplinary manner by seriously considering the possible intersection of phenomenology and empirical contemporary research in sociology, semiotics, linguistic, and communication studies. The main thesis of the paper is related to the concept of intersubjectivity. The author holds that intersubjectivity must include elements pertaining to interaction understood in a strong sense, which involves actions in the actual world. A secondary relevant thesis of the paper concerns the scope and meaning of the Husserlian approach to intersubjectivity. Copernicus shows that Husserl's reflections on community and communication set 
some fundamental grounds from which later inter interactional approaches to intersubjectivity scheme. According to this, there would be a certain continuity between Husserl's idea of social ontology and later social, so, sociological studies, uh, as I understood. The contemporary developments in ethnometodology and conversational analysis presented by the author could be understood as allowing a deepening or fuller description of Husserl's conception of social action and social reality. In other words, as providing concrete tools to approach interactional processes considered as everyday people, everyday people's problems. In this way, the author traces a line of influence that goes from the phenomenological approach of intersubjectivity to ethnometodology until it reaches the empirical level of intersubjectivity as the concrete organization of actions. In general terms, a promising alliance that requires collaboration between philosophers and empirical scientists is proposed. After reading a preliminary version of Professor Copero's paper, the following reflections, comments, questions came to my mind. Some of them concern the author's presentation of Husserlian phenomenology of communication and communities, while others refer specifically to the proposed idea of intersubjectivity as interaction in ethnometodology and conversational analysis. So the first set of comments concerns communities and communication. In assessing the possibilities of Husserlian phenomenology to open a path towards intersubjectivity as interaction, the author takes into consideration Husserl's reflections on intersubjectivity in the level of communication, which is the fundament of sociality. The most important difference to be taken into account in this context is the one that concerns intersubjectivity in empathy and intersubjectivity in the level of communication. As Colbert shows, empathy and communication should not be confused. Social communicative acts presuppose empathy. However, while empathy can be a one-sided process, so I stress can be, because I think it's just a matter of possibilities, communicative acts are reciprocal. Communication requires a form of recognition or reciprocal awareness between subjects. In fact, an alternative expression used by Husserl in Ideas 2 for social acts is act, acts of mutual relation, acted at social and vexed with seeing which stresses the bond between the communicating subjects. The co-determination of sub subjects and the formation of a community of will, so Willensgemeinschaft, I think it's the word, are key features of communication. Interestingly, Professor Copelu connects the phenomenon of reciprocal determination in Husserl's concept of communication to verbal expression. In his words, the specificity of the act of communication resides in the fact that I connect my desire to a verbal expression. The other understands my verbal expression as such, and he understands also that I am addressing him. End of quote. In this particular regard, I would like to point out, to remind of, an occasion in which Husserl considers nonverbal expressions as communication. In Gemeingeist, um, which is published in the um, 14th volume of Husserliana, he gives the following examples. He says, when my wife puts an apple on my hat to remind me that I have to eat something before leaving, I understand her intention. Another example, Romani people who leave a branch of a tree at the crossroad to let their comrades know which path they have taken. We have to consider these cases as cases of communication. As I understand, Husserl's concept of communication is not restricted to linguistic acts. What is at stake is the propositional intention and not the linguistic proposition. It should be noticed, though, that this nonverbal dimension is later considered by Professor Copero in his presentation of interactional empirical research. Now, going back to the characteristic of communication mentioned by him, I'm lost, no. A second feature of communicative acts that could be also attributed to Husserl's account is spontaneity. Even though it is not explicitly, explicitly recognized by Husserl, as far as I remember, it can be deduced from his examples that social communicative acts are deliberated. At least none of his examples indicates involuntary communication. According to this, for instance, involuntary mimic expressions could not be considered social acts or communicative acts even though they can provide insight into the inner life of the person. 
With respect to the potentiality of Husserl's approach to communication, it should be mentioned that, as noticed by Professor Coperu, one of its main advantages is that it distances from naturalistic views on the self and the other. This is an important aspect famously addressed by Husserl in the second volume of Idea, Ideas. There, he affirms that the constitution of the social world is not reduced to what is given in the naturalistic attitude, but corresponds to the personalistic attitude. Since in the naturalistic attitude, communication and social acts are understood as natural facts, in such framework, the phenomenon of communication could only be conceived of as causally explainable interaction between natural beings. Contrary to this, in the personalistic attitude, communicative acts account for, an, for a spiritual geistic, a spiritual connection between persons. In this Husserlian vein, the author argues that community and sociality can be thought of only on an interactive basis, which is the main thesis of the paper. This understanding of community is significant in at least two senses pointed out in the paper. On the one hand, it has the advantage of overcoming what he calls, I quote, the alternative individualism, atomism, allism. In his words, community does not consist either in related individuals or supra-individuals objectivity. With this, I think, um, Coperu touches upon an important issue concerning Husserl's theory of communalization and personalities of higher order. For Husserl, communities are the result of a teleological process of becoming a we. But this we, based on communicative acts, can have authentic or inauthentic forms. With this, I mean that the process of integration of individual subjects in a we is precisely a process with different degrees that is with weaker or stronger levels of integration. Based on communication, communities of will can be subordinated or coordinated, can be temporary or permanent, depending on whether they have a specific aim or a long-term unifying goal. One could, one could further argue that the mere performance of social communicative acts is the defining character of a weakly integrated kind of community named communicative integrated pluralities. Husserl differ differentiates them from communities with a higher level of integration, which includes sharing practical goals and the phenomena of moral communalization. So this aspect of the, um, the moral uh, um, character of communities is approached in many papers. Um, I mentioned only a few like Reinhoffner, Kreidel, Tulmon, James Hart, and, and Karl Schumann, but there are many others. In this scale, the highest level of integration is represented by personalities of higher order, groups that in some respect behave as a single person. For Husserl, personalities of higher order, authentic communities are neither a mere sum of individuals, individual wills pursuing each of them their own goals, nor a homogenization of individual wills. If we take, for instance, his articles on renewal of man and culture, which we are commemorating today, we can see that Husserl struggles to avoid the comprehension of communities as imperialistic organizations of will that threaten individual autonomy, but at the same time, he rejects quite strongly individualism as a form of irrationality contrary to authentic ways of living. So we are dealing here with a problem to which scholars have devoted many reflections. How are individual willing persons related to each other in a higher order willing community? On the other hand, Professor Copero notices that when conceived on an interactional basis, a further important aspect of communities comes to the fore, namely that it is that communities a community, it is not an object, but a dynamic form of life guided from inside by a teleological idea. So concerning this view, uh, this presentation, um, my question is how precisely the interactional model of intersubjectivity could allow for an account of communities that avoids the dichotomy, individualism, holism. While I can see the richness and fruitfulness of the interactional conception of intersubjectivity, my observation is motivated by the fact that Husserl's account of communication relies mostly on the experience of dialogical communication between individuals and depends on structures in the subject's experience like empathy and mutual agreement. 
Furthermore, spontaneity and reciprocity as features of social or communicative acts cannot be adapted to groups without problems. The problem becomes more evident if we consider that, according to Husserl, groups that are in communicational exchange can further integrate into subjectivities of even higher order, potentially ad infinitum. In this context, my question is how can the interactional model explain the relation between singular individuals in a community and the relation of an individual subject to a group, and even the possible interaction between groups, that is, between personalities of higher order? Can we say that if applied to the relation of a subject to a group and to the relation between groups, the communication is one-sided and that interaction in this level is limited? The question concerns the possible contributions of the interactional model to uh, current discussions on collective intentionality and the problem of individual subjects integration into a we or group membership. And my, my next comment is, um, concerns um, another point, uh, the, the idea of uh, search for order in interaction. As I understand, the analysis of conversations and in general interactive situations require collecting data with certain criteria. Even if conversational analysis does not aim to provide a normative model, if this is the case, because I'm not sure about that, I, I would like to know how it is. The analyst, the analyst should be guided by the search for some order in the interactional processes as they are ongoing. Is this order equivalent to a logic of interaction? How do descriptive and normative aspects relate in this, con in this concrete task of analyzing people's interactions? As presented by Professor Coperu, according to ethnomethodology and conversational analysis, the meaning of, of action emerges from the organization of action itself not from the outside. In this context, one could ask what kind of rationality emerges from interactive situations, or more broadly, how is the rationality of actions to be understood in the context of this interactive model? Further, uh, and, and this is connected, I think, with Tanya's comment, do valuations and feeling towards the situation play any significant role in the determination of the rationality of an action, or even in the consideration of the actions? If so, how can this role be described and how do emotional stances interact with reflection as intellectual position taking, taking towards a situation and causes of action? And this leads me to the next point, um, which has been motivated by something that you said regarding the, the need to leave aside the consideration of mental states. While discussing the problem of answering by doing and presenting some of its problems, the author proposes to leave aside the question of mental states to concentrate on the whole interactional situation. I fully agree with the intention to focus on semiotic shared context with, in encompassing context in which the agents encounter each other in order to understand the way people act and answer questions. Nevertheless, I would like to hear more on the author's view on the need of a theory of mind to approach communication. So what in the language of philosophy of mind or analytic philosophy would be like, what is um, your position regarding the need to attribute mental states? Because if the very idea of communication presupposes that I'm comprehended by the other, that what I say or do is meaningful and can be under understood by others, the topic of, of mental states could not be so easily be left aside. So that's my opinion. So at least how I understood the presentation. On the other side, with regards to first person's per perspective, it would be interesting to know if, if the interactional model allows accounting for the way actions are constituted for the agents themselves. That is how actions are given to us. So now after your answer to my previous question, I understand that if we are dealing with the level of collective actions, that's uh, more tricky. Taking up the above mentioned topic of group membership, one could pose the question of how are collective actions given to individual group members. And my last comment um, concerns the methodological aspect, um, the relation between phenomenology and empirical research models. In the last section of the paper, Professor Coperio affirms that ethnomethodology and conversational analysis are examples of the interactional approach that he has in mind when arguing for the need to consider intersubjectivity as an interactional situation. 
In this context, the methodological issue of levels of, an levels of analysis arises. As said, the proposed research fields are presented as examples, but could they be also understood as applications, as concretizations, or even as an enlargement of the phenomenology of communication? Summing up, one could ask whether we are dealing with the difference of levels of analysis, with the need of adapting phenomenology to empirical problems, or, for example, with a shift of attitude, to mention just a few options. I understand that this is that, that this methodological concern is part of a future task, task to which the present paper aims to open the path. Finally, I would like to mention that most of my observations are motivated by my lack of knowledge of the empirical researches that Professor Copero has addressed, but they have also been motivated by my desire to know more of a work that I consider promising and significant. Thank you very much. Muchas gracias, Celia. Dejo de compartir mi pantalla. Sí, por favor. Eh, ahora, Ion, profesor Ion, eh, you have 15 minutes for answer. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 15 minutes. 50. No, 15. 15. No, 2, 3. Yes, 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 I understand. 15. 15. Voilà. 15 minutes. Well, it's not much. It's not much. I uh, thank you. Uh, um, I, I will. Celia. I will answer to to Celia because I uh, I received the English version, and I um, I um, uh, I had a little bit time to to think about uh, the, the 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 questions. Um, um, is there is there an English version of of, of Tanya's um, comments? Yes, yes. Oh, I, I haven't received it. Uh, uh, on a project, on a la traduction en anglais. Je sais pas si tu l'as vu. Oh, je, uh, non, je ne l'ai pas okay. vu. I okay. haven't seen it. I will. Uh, she will ask me a, que a question uh, after after the the answers okay. to Celia, and uh, if there are other 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 questions, I hope uh, we will stay in contact, and uh, I I'll answer I'll answer her. Anyhow, fifteen minutes it's a very short time for uh, for answering. Mais, uh, mais de toute façon, après euh, ta réponse. Mm -hmm. On a plus de temps pour uh, la discussion tous ensemble. The whole, the whole discussion. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, on that occasion, we'll, we'll come back to, to, the, to, to Tanya's comments. Uh, sorry for the misunderstanding. So uh, but, uh, thank, you, thank you again. Um, uh, Celia probably un uh, uh, synthesized better than myself the, my communication. And um, obviously she... Um, made an inventory of the all important questions that uh, my presentation could raise. Uh, <clears throat> it's a lot of, uh, of, of discussing uh, about that. I will start with uh, this idea of involuntary mimic expressions that uh, uh, I was, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting one. And I, I was thinking about it. I was thinking that from, uh, um, um, as a parenthesis, uh, the discussion about gesture in 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 Husserl is now uh, uh, is now becoming more and more important. It will be an issue of studia phenomenological about gestures, and uh, as far as I understood, I didn't I haven't studied um, uh, this topic uh, as such. But as far as I um, from from what I I read, there's it's a kind of de debate controversy about how much Husserl managed to integrate gesture in his um, semiotic theory. It's a discussion about the, the revisions to six uh, logical um, uh, investigations uh, that take that took into account or not uh, gestures. But uh, the idea of um, yeah uh, in in the in the interactional model, I would say that involuntary mimic expression have a certainly should 
have certainly a place uh, should have a, should have a place. Uh, 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 I, I was thinking to uh, to, for example, to read uh, people with Tourette syndrome in an interaction. You can you can try to to don't take them certain words of them into account but uh, there is always a laughing around or some 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 reaction um yeah voluntary involuntary the, in this in, in in the interactive situation anything can can be a spark of a stuff or something uh any 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 gesture even involuntary can 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 deviate can change the course uh, of action and uh, um, so I, I will think I will think to 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 this uh, to this um, uh, issue. It's a, it's it's an interesting uh, it, it's an it's an interesting uh, one and um, mm -hmm. um, uh, Celia wrote that uh, in the personalistic attitude communicative acts account for a spiritual geistic connection between persons uh, i i thought at a certain point to use this attitude that the, the theory that uh, Husserl, uh, uh, the Husserl's theory about these attitudes but um finally i i I don't think it is so suitable. For example, personalistic attitude. I would, I would. Um, so this connection between persons uh, that is rather the outcome of the interact of the interaction or an effect of the interaction. Not, not the, not the ground of the interaction. I would say it's it's. I, I'm more. I am more on the side of the on the objective side in this, uh, in in this point. Um, um, that uh, the idea of um, of weaker or stronger levels of integration is a great, uh, great one, because if we take into if we take the interaction, uh, you know, seriously. We, we have to find indicators, tools to analyze interactions as such. And this is one of the tools, integration, levels of integration. I, I was thinking to, to draft the table according to this, but it would have been too complicated. Yes, interaction. Somehow I feel that maybe uh, disembodied uh, subjects will have more, more weak a uh, more a uh, weaker interaction maybe embodied subjects uh, a stronger interaction anyhow there are different levels of uh, of uh, integration and um, this is um, yes, uh, a, a criterion uh, to take uh, into account in uh, in uh, in any in discussing about intersubjectivity um, uh, on the contrary, I I wouldn't say that the highest level of integration is represented by personalities of higher order. Uh, well, I would say, yeah, probably. So it's it's true if we are saying like that. But um, I have a problem with personalities of higher order on any this kind of ontology or social ontology. Um, because uh, they seem to be a little bit too static, too, too, um, and um, things are so complicated and so fluid in this uh, in this field of uh, of um, taking in charge or not the will of the other. Uh, we, we are a species which. Uh, which is very, very, we change its mind that the situation are changing. Also, we have to take into account 
um, different forms of uh, of uh, different types of societies, uh, the the technologies involved involved in that in those societies and so forth. That um, um, this you know the the uh, in a word the the social ontology based on social the idea of social systems and so forth and all the categories used uh, used by this uh, paradigm of social system. Uh, or anything which is close to that, I think, uh, cannot be useful now. They've been probably useful. They might have been in another, in another approach. For example, if you take into account complexities, etc. But uh, um, probably, oh, you, you, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just. I, I had the intuition that you don't like very much the idea of personalities of higher order. Um, I don't, I don't. But, uh, but I think maybe you don't like it because it stresses too much the analogy between individual subjectivity and collective subjectivity. Like, uh, co yes, it's the idea of personality. Personality of higher order is the, 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 the analogy is, yes, the, the way that Husserl talks about the community as analogous, as analogous to an individual subject and in that way, it could be, yes, to an objective entity. So that's your, your concern with, with this concept. It's, it's what what kind of entity? I haven't heard the, the what static, kind of entity? An objective static. entity. Or object static entity. Key. Objective. Yes, yes. So, static, but, yes. If, but maybe, I, I think maybe if you think about static and dynamic, yes, static and Genetic. dynamic in, in the sense of, uh, the way you see it so maybe it's not necessarily the idea so the person the community you can see it in its interactive way and and also in a static way and but, the, uh, the the observation what was the the your, your idea no, no my idea is that I understand that personalities of higher order the concept of personality of higher order sounds a static but um, because because of its analogy with um, individual subjectivity, um, because of that analogy, and probably for for some other reasons, I, I would I wouldn't make a you know uh, um, I would discuss too much about mm -hmm. that. Uh, so because we we I think there are many other points uh, when we agree. Uh, well, well, our opinion are convergent. Uh, probably, uh, yes, yes. We maybe we should move on. I, I will. I, I would say I understand your 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 point of view, and I was uh, um, uh, I, I was interested in that topic at a certain point, but I uh, then this a little bit too complicated and i have always in mind some practical um, you know reasons so um, it's better to solve a question uh, it's not a it's not an issue that we can solve now i think this uh, we should we should uh, take we should go into a political theory or something like that uh, that would be too complicated for the moment, and we, we it's better to 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 keep uh, to stay in um, in the in the in the area uh, which is um, uh, manageable manageable for the moment. Yeah. <laughs> that that I had that in that uh, also that uh, thing in in, in mind. Uh, if I have a, a few few minutes. Yes. Uh, okay. uh, yeah, thank you for the reference to, to the renewal of men and culture. Uh, I, I will take that uh, certainly into account. Um, yeah, avoiding the dichotomy individualism, holism. Uh, I will, I will, I will say that when I when I read 
good Charles Goodwin paper. Goodwin was a, an anthropologist and a, and a linguist from Los Angeles. He died a few years ago. Uh, that have, the the reading of that papers have been so um, helpful uh, because I I found uh, someone who doesn't care about these dichotomies. You know, uh, sometimes uh, it's it's relaxing somehow. So, uh, so some issues of, of philosophy can be can be solved by looking in another direction, and uh, I must confess that's probably what I'm doing now. Uh, uh, after uh, many years of uh, reading that the text that uh, you are working on now. And um, um, I, 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 I felt this need to, to, to find a more um, somehow, yes, relaxing way of uh, seeing the reality around, a more relaxed, a more, uh, not, a more relaxed, more, not, not very much, uh, um, defined by uh, these big themes or concepts and uh, the oppositions and uh, and the and the problems probably we uh, it's a change of focus probably more more of that and with that i i am coming to to also uh, as a parenthesis collective intentionality i don't like it uh, and also the idea <laughs> the definition <laughs> then the, this view it's uh, it, if if you add some embodied approach to collective intentionality well, that would be uh, palatable for me so i'm but sorry that i no no okay but do you think that collective intentionality does not take into account embodied dimensions does not take into account yes you, you think it it's oh, oh, okay you, no you are I, agree no i uh, no actually no I, I i don't think that that it necessarily has to leave aside the embodied subject because it's not necessarily an um doxical level of intentionality so intentionality has also different levels so the same way that there is uh, individual intentionality which is not intellectual we can speak of collective intentionality, which is embodied, only embodied, embodied and theoretical. So I don't know. I'm not very much into that discussion. I just mm -hmm. brought it up because I I thought it was somehow. Yes, it is an issue. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. It is an issue. And many of our colleagues are working on that. I, I'm not saying that it's a very important issue. Mm -hmm. Simply, I, I uh, uh, this, this interactional, um approach is an alternative to this issue i would say okay so okay. it, it's, it's an alternative but the 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 four well, the four types of theories that i try to 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 uh, to to capture in that in that table uh, each of each of it captures uh, uh some aspects of the core uh, intersubjective uh, processes Okay. Uh, they, they are not exclusive. I, I would say that simply in for certain issues is better to, first of all, we have to acknowledge the interactional aspects of intersubjectivity. And secondly, uh, for different issues, for different problems that we have to solve, probably different theories are more adapted than than the others, and we have to discuss that. So uh, it's kind of um, I'm uh, um, I, I am a kind of uh, method uh, pluralist concerning the methodology. But of course, I am advocating this kind of research uh, as being uh, more interesting, at least for certain for certain topic. As I, I will I will give you an example. I will, I, um, one of my PhD students is working now on uh, on um, on 
um, addiction on, on what is happening in the uh, therapy groups for um, addicted persons. Mm -hmm. And uh, for what is happening there, how, how come that, that, that one person can stay sober and another not, that depends more on the group mm -hmm. and, uh, and the methodology that you, uh, for, for uh, saying that, it's probably uh, uh, the interactionist one is more adapted, more adapted to, to, to that topic. Uh, that would be uh, um, a, a great issue that of logic of interaction. But such, such I would love to, to talk more about that, but uh, uh, it's, it's uh, um, um, I'm not sure that I, I, I'm not sure that we can speak of a logic of interaction. So uh, there is an order of interaction. The Goffman insisted on that. I haven't included it, him in the in the in the overview. Um, um, but um, um, I don't think that this is kind of logic. Maybe um, this kind of order we have to. To, uh, to the order itself to, to question in this uh, in these interactions. Uh, Ion? Yes. Um, yes. On t'a envoyé ton le le texte en anglais de Tania mm -hmm. hier soir, mais et, elle va à te poser brièvement l'idée. Yes. Donc tu peux commenter. Uh, I haven't seen it. I, I haven't. Maybe, uh, I'm very sorry. I haven't. Uh, I haven't. Uh, pas, pas seen grave. it. It's not grave. It's not grave. She will do a little resume. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Great. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tanya. Uh, thank you, Tanya. So there are many other discussions. I hope uh, with maybe some issues to to discuss with Celia, but uh, uh, I will leave it for another occasion or on email on. Uh, Yes, we can we can continue discussing for yes, email. Yes, thank yes. you. Thank you for answering my question. Uh, I thank you. Tanya. Thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Professor Coperio. Uh, well, I, I say some ideas about the of the the mm -hmm. core of my test. Um, I, I suggest in the test that the affectivity is a medium between docs and praxis. And I suggest the idea that the uh, uh, in function of your of, of your main idea, the uh, um, affective background of the communities, uh, because the affective is a, 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 a kind of presupposed of the action. So um, the the main idea that I try to suggest is that. Um, um, the idea in order to respond to the question of which is the function of the object in the into the action um, and then the action found um, the, the communities uh, the relation between feelings interest and action and how the values and the the, the most of the values that they have the person and the communities determine the um, their actions and um, and I put some uh, some layers about the idea of the experience to aspire to aspire something, and then choose that, and uh, that uh, experience aspire to something presuppose mm -hmm. and that I consider that value, and um, and finally the, the uh, on, one, uh, other idea that I put in the test was if the if you think that in the perspective of in the rush in the interaction mm -hmm. and the relation between phenomenology and social sciences and the perspective of interdisciplinary could be offered us a review of the values that I found or that there are the, the background of the the different uh, societies that uh, the fact are. Mm -hmm. yeah. pa par, rapport yes. à, uh, par rapport aux questions de Tania, je voudrais um, commenter 
que je crois qu'il n'y a pas de communauté sans euh, un ethos partagé commun. Non? Mm -hmm. Donc, euh, est -ce, est -ce, si on comprend l'ethos, ethos, comme les, la connaissance euh, émotionnelle des valeurs, c'est un, 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 euh, un nucléo, un, c'est le, le corps, le corps of, of, of the community. Donc, euh, je ne sais pas. I, I understand, I understand. Um, yes, it was a, a, a question raised also by Celia about the effective, uh, effective aspects. I, um, I haven't worked particularly on effective aspects. They are mentioned in Gallagher, um, but um, um, what I could say, uh, the, uh, the suggestion would be that we, if we, if we take the affective level as a somehow as a fundamental one, as a as, as, as a ground, um, and if if that would is the the the, the suggestion, I I will upset you, but I will say. I wouldn't do it. Uh, I, 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 would, I wouldn't take the affective aspects isolated from the, from the interactive situation. So uh, I, I'm a kind of holist, if you, if you, if you, if you prefer here. So um, uh, why? I, I, will, I will give you an example. So that doesn't... Uh, uh, that doesn't um, sort of diminish the the value of the or, or the the uh, oper operativity the the importance of affective aspects or or values just uh, we have to situate and to understand their role and how how they are how they are coming into the development into the into the the unfolding of a situation. We have to, to keep in mind, I think, I, we have to keep in mind always that situation are unfolding and the, then um, there is not such something like a stable set of values or, or, or other things to which we will, we will always uh, uh, look up. It, to, it could be, so it, it would be easy to be like that. Is not uh, it's not that easy. We have always uh, there, there are always in competition these values. There are always uh, uh, a discussion. So I will. Uh, I, I um, it comes in my mind. I, I wrote a paper. Maybe it is a little bit surprising for you, uh, surprising in this context. But I wrote a paper on violence, and I discussed about moral acts related to violence. So. Uh, uh, I wasn't able to integrate these ideas in this presentation, uh, uh, but you can find this paper in the, it's, it's in, in the Journal of Human Studies, or probably also in my academia. Uh, dot edu, and uh, uh, it, it it could be a little bit surprising that I discuss this. Uh, um, so I see moral acts, or largely so. Um, this kind of, so by analogy, I, I see the effect is very important because there is always a conversion. So it is in this dynamic, in this dynamic which can be individual or collective, uh, uh, the starting point would be uh, something like, um, like a conflict, and the the, con the conversion of the initial attitude would be uh, 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 would would um, would produce so effect effective effective states are uh, involved in this conversion, and they are leading to uh, to a moral to a moral attitude. I would. Uh, uh, probably I'm too I'm too tired uh, now, 
it's uh, it's uh, it's late evening in uh, in Romania, uh, uh, and uh, uh, but I would, um, for example, there is a paper of, uh, uh, that I like very much uh, of uh, Sara Passetto, which are analyzing a text of Husserl uh, going in this uh, in this direction on the on the um, on the wheel and the going. Also, um, uh, acknowledging a kind of conflictuality as a basis for human interaction, on which it is built a moral attitude as a response to that. And in that response, re that response is effective, basically. We are, so we are seeing it as effective. We are, we are, we are interpreting it as, as effective, and we need this concept, this, uh, this, uh, these concepts to, to describe what was happening. But uh, 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 it's, it's, uh, it, it, it's in this way uh, that I would, that I will use this affective, uh, uh, the, the, the the affectivity in that, uh, because I, I'm saying that because I had the feeling sometimes uh, our colleagues are looking up to affectivity as something, something real grounding or somehow fundamental and um, inalterable. So in uh, which um, uh, it, uh, I, I will integrate it into a into a into a. Um, dynamic okay. uh, as I tried to to briefly and not convincingly <laughs> to 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 describe but I um, uh, um, uh, yeah, you, you can go to, to that paper uh, on on, uh, on on violence and uh, similar uh, views which are not mainstream in phenomenology, uh, but uh, uh, that's, the, that's the situation. Okay. Uh, creo que Celia tienes otra pregunta? No? Oh, ah, sí, sí. pero le hice mi mente. No, <laughs> uh, no, I'm, I wanted to, to ask if, um, so you say that uh, some of uh, our colleagues take the notion of affectivity as grounding, but it should be considered as dynamic. But I, so I, I, I agree that as it's not very fruitful to consider affectivity as an originary source of whatever, but I don't see how the concept of ground should be understood as contrary to dynamic because you can see there are grounding moments in dynamic processes. So you can take into account affectivity in a dynamic way and recognize its role. For instance, for Husserl, as, as Tanya said, I think affectivity is grounding for willing. And it's not, it does not mean that willing needs to be reduced to, uh, to affectivity. It just means that it has a place that has to be considered. But that's just my opinion. Yes, I agree with you. I, I I agree with you. It's 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 only a problem of of, of framing or some conceptualizing or way of ways of speaking. What I'm what I'm trying to say, what I'm trying to do um, somehow is to probably we we discuss too much a little bit. <laughs> Uh, I'm always more interested in uh, in uh, in 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 concrete investig so in investigation on, con on on concrete situation, and I moved a little bit in this uh, in this uh, in this area, keeping an eye on on theoretical aspects, okay. of course. But uh, you yeah you you cannot only stay stay there. That 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 is my. Yes, I, I, I understand that. And I agree with that. And I think it's what makes the philosophy a significant task in the world for the life of for our life, for everyone's life. Mm -hmm. But I also think that if we are if we are talking in a theoretical level, we should be clear about the concepts that we're using. 
So in that level, I think the discussion is worthwhile, but I don't mean that we have to keep discussing absolutely, about what that accessibility yes. means. But if we are, if we think that phenomenology can contribute somehow, it's because it's it's potentiality to be clear about the use of, of, of levels of experience, of concepts, and that's what we can contribute to the discussion. So absolutely. That. This is a, we can say that we have a common ground. So <laughs> yes. it's a ground. I, I we reach the ground. <laughs> we reach the no, no, which I, I'm happy that we reach a ground. It's a common ground. Yes, but uh, otherwise, yes, there are different uh, different approaches, different models, um, different uh, tastes, maybe of ways of of, of doing uh, doing uh, this uh, this researches. Uh, maybe I haven't um, uh, talked too much. So uh, the, 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 this talked too much about uh, uh, there are many uh, many tools of, of phenomenology, like uh, like um, interviews, phenomenological interviews, or you know naturalized phenomenology, everything which um, uh, or um, this, this all this all these discussions or this uh, this attempts to integrate uh, neuro um, neuro uh, neurosciences or cognitive sciences all the discussions uh, what i'm trying to do is to propose some methods coming from a, from a, from a, uh, interactionist studies, generally speaking, interaction studies, generally speaking, like conversational analysis, pragmatics, and uh, and 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 so forth. And I think these uh, these are um, very important for phenomenology. If uh, one uh, uh, keep in mind the idea to go to the things themselves. Uh, the things, things themselves are this kind of uh, kind of reality that we are framing in different ways where it, it escapes us many times, but we have to always go back to to this uh, this uh, flow, this stream of of, uh, of the stream, this reality, uh, you know, reality as a as a stream. Yeah, uh, not of consciousness necessarily, but of uh, consciousness in the world. I, I, I would, I would, I would say. Bueno, hemos llegado al 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 final. Una arrive a la fin. Eh, quisiera agradecer en nombre del Círculo Peruano de Fenomenología y Hermenéutica al profesor Ion Pasquecet Rotar Chelui. Es, es muy tarde en Rumanía. Quiero agradecerle por eso, por habernos acompañado. Muchísimas gracias a Tania y a Celia por sus comentarios. La discusión ha estado muy interesante y los invitamos a, a conectarse nuevamente mañana a las 11 para escuchar al profesor Javier San Martín y a los comentaristas. Thank you thank very you, much. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much. Gracias. Hasta luego. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Gracias. Hasta luego. Hasta luego.